Welcome to the PTK initiation ceremony. Thank you everyone for coming. Great. So my name is Professor Meredith Frank, and this is Dr. Doug Powell, and we are the advisors. So I am going to uh, introduce the president of PTK for the Beta Tail the Beta Tau Lambda chapter, and that is Nina Lima, who is going to start us off. Hello, everyone. I'm Nina. I'm the president of uh, Beta Tau Lambda chapter of Phi Theta Kappa. I'm pleased to welcome you all to the installation of our new Phi Theta Kappa members this afternoon. These students are about to be initiated into a scholarly fellowship fellowship, which embraces community college, not only in our own state, but the nation and internationally. Phi Theta Kappa was founded in 1918, 1918 and officially recognized in 1929 by the American Association of Junior Colleges. Today, it has grown from the original eight chapters to over 700 regular and alumni chapters nationwide. The purpose of Phi Theta Kappa is to recognize and encourage our hallmarks of scholarship, fellowship, leadership, and service among two-year college students. In pursuit of these ideals, Phi Theta Kappa has become more than a club. Its members enter into an intellectual and cul cultural fellowship that extends beyond our campus into regional and, nation and national networks. In Beta Tau Lambda chapter, our new members will find an, an atmosphere of scholarship. Our purpose is to foster a spirit of devotion to study and develop principles that are embodied in the Greek letters, which stand for light, aspiration, and purity. My fellow students here before you have fulfilled all the requirements for membership, and we are pleased to accept them into the National Phi Theta Kappa fraternity. Each of these in, uh, initiates maintains a cumulative D GPA point average of 3.5 or above. This is at last, at last as many A's and B's, and each initiate is more than deserving of this honor. Thank you so much, Nina. Thank you, Nina. Right now we have our guest speaker, which we are so blessed to have Kevin Oranger. O-Rangers. O-Rangers. Yep. All right. And he is the director of innovation and education. And he is also in charge of the Challenger Learning Center. So I'm so grateful that you said yes, that you would be here today on this beautiful day to come and speak with us. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, just in case so everybody can see, could you pop that, that PowerPoint up? I sure oh, can. Thank you. I'm going to let so, you slide it for me if you don't mind. Of course. Awesome. So, uh, again, thank you so much, uh, Meredith and Dr. Powell. Thank you, everybody here in attendance uh, in the classroom. Thank you for the you guys that are online, and congratulations for being inducted into PTK. That's a heck of an honor. Um, I can't say that ever happened to me. So, again, kudos to you. Uh, once again, my name is Kevin Arrangers. I'm the Director of Educational uh, Engagement and Innovation here at Montgomery County Community College. It is a relatively new position for the college, and it is squarely in the framework of developing pathways for pre-K all the way up through grade 12 as a means of matriculating to the college. So it is my job to create innovative and new and keep going the current things that are happening for educational pathways for kids to find themselves reflected in opportunities here on campus, and then again, to potentially matriculate here uh, to Montco Community College. And I'm real proud uh, to be able to do that because Montco really is the community's college and it really involves all of us, not just us academically as students or as faculty, but also in bringing partnerships uh, for the community onto campus. So with that, I have the fortunate pleasure of launching a brand new initiative as part of this educational partnerships initiative. It's called the Challenger Learning Center. Um, those of you guys might know a little bit about the Challenger Space Shuttle. Unfortunately, back in 1986, uh, there was a disaster that went along with it. Uh, there was a complication with an O-ring on one of the rocket boosters. But the reason why that, that Challenger mission was so important is because it had its first citizen astronaut who was also an educator. She was a classroom teacher. 
Um, and her name was uh, Krista McAuliffe. And unfortunately, she perished uh, in that tragedy. But the families of all of those astronauts came together and decided that they wanted to actually basically, uh, if you will, push it forward to give more kids, and particularly those kids from historically underrepresented and underserved areas of the country, an opportunity to involve themselves in a real life STEM opportunity, science, technology, engineering, and math, and give kids an opportunity to find really cool and culturally relevant ways to recognize that space isn't distant and out there, but it could be a part, uh, could be a part of their future career, but it's also a part of our everyday life. So what we're doing right now, for instance, and the cell phone in your pocketbook or in your back pocket, all of that came literally from space-based technologies. So um, just after the Challenger disaster was birthed the Challenger Learning Center. There's over 40 across the country, and there's one actually in the UK. Uh, they're expanding to South Korea. They're expanding globally. Uh, and we're very, very fortunate to be the first and only one in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And our region will serve not just Monco, but it will serve all seven counties in southeastern Pennsylvania. Next slide, uh, please, Meredith. And a little bit about uh, our team. And I'm fortunate to have a team that are going to be responsible for day-to-day -day operations or facilitation of what we call flights or simulated missions. Uh, joining me is Annalise Giuliani. Uh, we're all, by the way, right here in South Hall. We'll be moving over to the Challenger Learning Center building shortly in the next week. Um, but Annalise uh, and I are relatively, uh, we're all relatively new. Uh, Annalise comes from NASA directly. She ran a student internship program for several years at uh, Johnson Space Center. So real proud to have her being uh, what we call the program manager for Challenger. And in Challenger parlance, she's the flight director. So she will be responsible for making sure all the missions go successfully. And we're also proud to have a former MCC employee that was working uh, with Jared uh, over in Student Services in, in uh, South Hall, Anjali Aker. Anjali is an educator, has a terrific background like you. We're very happy to have her. Uh, she is now the new program coordinator for the Challenger Center. And again, in Challenger parlance, she will be the uh, uh, program, or excuse me, the flight commander. So our flight commander and our flight director are directly responsible for our day-to-day -day ops for the Challenger Learning Center. Next slide, please. Awesome. So where are we located? Well, on your way, and here comes our pizza. So I'm going to try and go fast because I don't want to separate ourselves from our food. But you guys probably passed our building, which is uh, the former sustainability hub. It's building 140. You can't miss that sign. Um, that's where the Challenger, uh, the Challenger Center will be located. Again, it was our former sustainability hub. It housed our aquaponics and hydroponics lab, which now live on the Bluebell campus. Uh, and just the rear of this building has three floors. The first two floors will be the Challenger Learning Center. And the third floor, we're kind of calling the collaboratory or the mezzanine collaborative laboratory. That'll be a place for us to actually have community events, student and faculty-based events, and also something that we're calling STEM extension activity programs for middle school students. Next slide, please, Meredith. So what is Challenger? Well, I told you it's a little bit about it. Uh, you can keep clicking through, Meredith, if you don't mind. So basically what we do is we are squarely focused on giving kids an immersive, really fun, and really engaging, and dare I say, real life uh, space simulation. And it's geared for grades five through eight. And again, as I started off my presentation, Challenger is squarely focused on the pathway program for middle school kids. We realize and we recognize and we have for the last 35 years of research that's been done is if we can engage kids earlier, particularly in unique STEM and STEAM opportunities, again, it gives them a possibility of seeing themselves reflected uh, in, in their ability to have a future career in it. Next slide, please, or uh, next sentence. So our missions, of course, it's an educational program, so it's academically sound. So all of the activities involved in it, all the curriculum involved in it is aligned to the NGSS and the Common Core Standards. Uh, next line, please. And uh, again, what we're trying to do is create real life experiences that are truly dynamic. And one of the things I know, at least from my perspective as a youth, is I never saw myself reflected in space. I knew for a fact I wasn't going to become an astronaut. And that's true. Only about 0.0001% of the planet has an opportunity to participate in launches to space. But one of the coolest things that Challenger provides is, and it's an old saying that comes right out of the Apollo 
uh, lunar missions, which is no one goes to space alone. So as much as those fantastic astronauts have the opportunity to get all the credit, it takes everybody. It takes welders, it takes seamsters and seamstresses that sew up suits. It takes technologists, it takes engineers, it takes a myriad of people all doing a common mission to get somebody to travel to space. And again, nobody goes alone. And Challenger is trying to provide that for students again to see themselves reflected. Next slide, please. Uh, and again, lastly, of course, building uh, important uh, 21st century skills. One of the most important that comes out of this, interestingly enough, is communication. If we can't communicate and collaborate together effectively as a team, we will never get people into space. And thus, when communication breakdowns happen or ethics, there's a problem with ethics or there's a problem with just collaboration, we get disasters like that Challenger mission in 1986. So those important problem solving skills and collaboration are super important, critical thinking, of course, but it's communication that is really, really an important part of doing anything when it comes to space. Next slide, please, Meredith. Uh, you can click off uh, right straight through. So uh, what do we offer? Well, as I keep mentioning, we fly these missions and they are just that. So in the Challenger Center, we have two floors of space simulators. We have a, and I'll get to this in a second, we have a mission control room and we have a space station. Um, and uh, this year's program that we're currently training on, our in-person mission is called Lunar Quest. And the challenge is we're trying to get ourselves back onto the surface of the moon. We'll launch a rover and find caverns on the lunar surface that could potentially support a habitat for life. And we're doing that by throwing a whole bunch of challenges at students, radiation issues, oxygen leaks, et cetera. And they have to, working together collectively, overcome some of these, uh, these uh, challenges. We'll also offer virtual missions for schools across the region that can't get to us. We're calling that mission again, staying with a lunar theme, we're calling it Destination Moon. And we're able to do a mission with students in a classroom like this with us right here on campus. Um, we'll have a series of those that will be offered in the future. And then last but not least, that might be of interest to you all are these large group programs. We can fly 48 kids in the Challenger simulators, but we recognize that schools are gonna wanna bring multiple classes here. So we're gonna engage with the faculty and some of our other staff here at the college, and we're gonna create large group STEM-based, what we call it, extension activities. I call it the collaboratory, which is a collective and collaborative laboratory, which uses all the facilities here on campus to engage fifth through eighth grade students in robotics, drones, aerial and underwater, flight and aviation simulation, and, uh, and uh, other kinds of A in the STEM and STEAM offerings, other kinds of art opportunities. So we're gonna be building those over the next year and we're gonna to need to be testing these. We would love student input. And we'll talk a little bit about that in just a second. Um, so those are on their way, the large group programs. You can click through, Meredith. Um, and our in-person missions, how do they work? So again, we talked about it being for grades five through eight. They're delivered on site, of course, at the Challenger Learning Center and our simulators. And of course, we do customize these based on the class that comes in. The Challenger software is designed for students that sit at the terminals to decide and select without high, middle, or low selection, but allows them to actually pick and choose what is the best means through which they can engage with the content. So some of the reading levels might be a little bit higher. Some of them might be, if you will, a little bit lower, make it easier for students, but it's a unique customized experience for every student, not just a generalized experience. Next slide. Uh, and again, it's two hours, uh, it's a two hour simulation. We'll talk a little bit about how that works from 10 to 48 students. You can click right through there. Our, our in-person mission, as I mentioned, is called Lunar Quest, but we'll be working on two more missions over the coming months and years. That's Expedition Mars and Operation Comet, which allows us to fly to a comet, very similar to a mission that just occurred uh, about six and a half months ago. So we're looking forward to be able to launching those uh, in the future. And next slide, please. So how does this work? And you can click right through it, Meredith. Um, so in that two hour period, how we are working with students is we bring them all together collectively in a room very much like this. Interestingly enough, at NASA or Blue Origins or SpaceX, mission briefing rooms, are kind of boring, right? They're just sort of desks and, and, uh, and, and four walls around you. But what we try to do is bring everybody together and we want to engage the students by getting them actively involved in how they'll go about doing their mission, which means in that briefing room, we're gonna be breaking students up into about nine different teams. 
Some of those students will become astronauts on a space station. Some of those students will become mission control specialists. And they'll be partnering between mission control and the space station on things like navigation, communications, the weather, the geology on any surface of moon or planet that we land on, et cetera. So they're going to have real world jobs that we're going to break them up into. And then after the pre-mission briefing, we'll split them off into those two teams. One floor of the Challenger Learning Center will have a transport room, which is a rocket ship ride with 4D effects and all as well as an attached uh, spaceship or spacecraft or space station, as we call it, which is where our astronaut technicians will be working. And then on the second floor of Challenger, we have both a briefing room and we have a real life mission control. And it's modeled on Blue Origins mission control. It's just like it. Um, so we're real proud of being able to do that. So the kids break up the two cohorts, astronauts, uh, astronaut technicians and mission control specialists. And we begin the first arc of our mission. Somewhere in the first arc, we throw the kitchen sink at the kids. They're going to have all kinds of failures, and they have to figure out collectively how to solve those particular failures. We bring them back together at the mid-mission briefing, and they come up with a solution for ensuring that the mission will end successfully, and that will be what we call arc two. But in this case, the kids that were mission control specialists will switch. They'll become the astronauts, and the astronauts will go to mission control which gives kids all opportunities to handle any aspect of a mission. And it allows them to come up with solutions on their own for how they're going to solve uh, these problems and have a successful mission. And then of course we do the post-mission briefing, bringing them all back together, high-fiving each other, but also doing an evaluation in terms of what they've learned and what they see themselves potentially doing in the future, maybe as a career or as a future college student. Next slide, please. Our virtual missions, we'll click through this relatively quickly. Again, uh, they're very similar to our in-person missions, but they're virtual. And the one that we are offering, of course, is Destination Moon. We already have about 11 of these lined up before the end of the semester, and they're all test missions because we're still learning. So we're going to try and do this uh, collectively as a team, myself, Annalise, Anjali, and doing it uh, essentially for free for participating schools, and particularly those here in Pottstown and Norristown. So we're working squarely with those schools uh, for our inaugural uh, programming. Next slide, please, Meredith. You can click right through there. Our large group programs, as I mentioned to you, are going to include things like robotics and drones. Just to give you guys a little bit of an insight, there's an organization called U.S. Drone Soccer. They launched in Colorado. They actually launched at a museum I was the executive director of called the Space Foundation Discovery Center. And if you can imagine if you're a Harry Potter fan, if, if you ever read it and you are aware of the game Quidditch, it's basically a game of Quidditch using drones. So aerial drones that have a soccer ball exoskeleton. There's a real life court that's netted all around. Instead of basketball hoops being sort of uh, horizontal, they're actually placed vertical. So you have attackers and defenders and you play a, literally a game of Quidditch. So we're hoping to be able to anchor that uh, to the Challenger Learning Center in the next year. It should be a really, really fun activity. If we get really good at it, very much like e-gaming, there are a lot of colleges that are now using U.S. drone soccer as an athletics program. So maybe sometime in the future we'll be able to do that. So STEM extension activities will have really fun complementary activities that will also, again, complement the Challenger mission. And of course, align with the standards. Next slide, please. So summer opportunities. Um, for those of you that might be around in the summertime looking for um, any kind of opportunities, whether it's a student internship or whether it's volunteering, um, we, are, uh, we have, and this is the fourth year that we are launching our Janet's Planet Astronaut Academy. This is the first year where we'll be in, incorporating the Challenger Learning uh, Center experience for the students. And there'll be opportunities for kids to do some amazing things when it comes to space-inspired STEM programming. Additionally, we'll be taking the students to Heritage Airport. Um, they'll get an opportunity to explore helicopters and airplanes, meet with an astronaut. They'll be able to meet with members of the FAA to learn about careers right here in our area, careers uh, in aerospace and aerospace technology. Uh, and again, that's coming up um, two camps, one here in Pottstown, July 18th through the 22nd, and one on Bluebell, uh, July 25th through the 29th. So we hope to have a pretty busy summer. Next slide. And that, uh, essentially, folks, is the Challenger Learning Center. So I appreciate Dr. Powell and Meredith giving me the opportunity to present this to you. I know probably some of you are scratching your head going, why would a college do this? And the answer is, why not? 
the more um, kids we can involve, the more teachers we can do training with, the more community members we can engage, the more Monco becomes truly that community college. So I thank you guys and I applaud you um, for your participation. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Any questions, by the way? I probably went off camera. Questions from anybody at home? Cool. Thanks, guys. I have a question. Is it sure. Really groups or is it like individual? Like you could... Really great question. So oftentimes when people think of something like Challenger, they think of a museum where it's open all the time and you can walk through in their exhibits. This isn't. This is truly an educational experience. So we're going to be partnering directly with schools and school districts. So school can send multiple classes to us, or we'll be partnering with out of school time providers like camps, like the Ys, et cetera. And again, they will then book admission with one of their cohorts. So it isn't open to the general public, but if there are homeschool groups that are actually uh, co-ops that want to come together as a cohort, we can do that too. And, and last year mm -hmm. for the Janet, Planet thing. Yes. They didn't do the challenger. No, it wasn't open yet. So this right. summer will be. My the first. son did that last year. Did he like he, it? He did. Awesome. He, he um he went up in a little plane. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Um, but I would love for him to experience the the challenger. Sign thing. him up again. We yeah, still have plenty I, of spots. I, I will. Yeah. Cool. I have a quick question. Sure. If we wanted to do a PTK meeting mm -hmm. and go and do um a launch, love to show you. Absolutely. So that could be like a really great idea for all of us to what do. We think, guys. That fun. We need a minimum of 10. So if we can scrounge up 10 people, we're good. All right. Well, come on. People, come on. <laughs> I volunteer. I'm an alumni, right? Yeah. I'm an alumni. And then we count too, right? You absolutely do. Yeah. So please, that would be awesome. If we could do that. Yeah, we should do that as like our last thing before the end of the year. That could be our last meeting. Hit us now because we'll get you in the boat. All right. Okay. I'll be emailing you today. Perfect. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank Congrats. You Absolutely. Great pizza. <laughs> oh, take a, take a slice. Please. No, no, I'm good. Thank you, though. I appreciate it. Thanks, folks. Have a good day. You're welcome. You as well. So, yes, I'm going to have you now. I, Leah, have in my hand a torch, symbolic of knowledge, which is the servant of wisdom which dwells with prudence and leads in the way of righteousness in the midst of the paths of judgment. I, Leah, have the white rose type typifying purity and the beauty of life with its white buds signifying intellectual associations. I present this emblem of Phi Beta Kappa. It consists of a golden slab keyed at the top and the bottom. The golden field refers to the golden opportunities that abound on every hand for society folk to evidence their culture and perform good works. Across the slab, you will observe the black band. It represents the three ideals which band us together. Shining through the black enamel background are the three Greek letters which are the initials of those three mystic Greek words, meaning wisdom, aspiration, and purity. Behind the band is a wreath, on the one side composed of oak leaves and on the other laurel. The oak leaves stand for stability and strength of character as symbolized by the mighty oak. The graceful curling leaves of the laurel signify achievement and success, all attributes, for membership in our society. Above the band is the representation of the head of Athena, the goddess of learning. This badge stands as a symbol for the high idealism of our organization and membership in our group. Okay. These students have fulfilled all the requirements for membership and have been selected because they have chosen scholarship, leadership, service, and fellowship as their hallmarks. I, Douglas Powell, recommend them for acceptance to the Beta Tau Lambda chapter 
of Phi Theta Kappa International Honor Society of two-year colleges. Inductees, you are about to be inducted into the Scholarly Fellowship, which embraces two-year colleges not only in your state, but around the world. I'm pleased to present these candidates for membership into our society. This is the point where you repeat after me. You ready? Everybody at home, you ready? Ready. <laughs> I, I, I do solemnly promise to uphold the standards of Phi Theta Kappa. Solemnly promise to whistle the. Let me read it again. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Doug Powell. You insert your own name. <laughs> do solemnly promise. Do solemnly promise to uphold the standards of Phi Theta Kappa. To uphold the standards of Phi Theta Kappa. And to make this object a name. And to make this object a name. Foremost in my mind. Foremost in my mind. And I so solemnly pledge allegiance. And I so solemnly, I solemnly pledge allegiance. To my fellow members. To my fellow, my fellow members. And to aid them. And to aid them. And to aid them. In all worthy endeavors. In all, all worthy endeavors. In memory. All right. Well, thank you all. Um, I would like you all to uh, come forward, at least the students that are in the room, um, and find the induction uh, book that is right here. Right here so. All right.
And thank you. I hope everyone has a fabulous day. Caitlin, Kate, uh, Nina, thank you so much for joining from home. Appreciate you being able to make it. And you will probably be hearing soon from Leah, who will be asking for some good times to do the Challenger. So hopefully people will want to go, go do the space mission. Thank you, guys. I'm going to stop recording. You should stay on. Thank you. I look forward to it. Awesome.